Welcome back everyone to Hearts of Iron 4, TNO, Lasters of Europe, a lot of different acronyms there. Uh, but let us begin with another focus in which we are still trying to kick down the debt. <clears throat> Send them home, or hand them over. Well, I believe that we were going to... Let's go send them home. How about that? Amongst the Italian government, there are many less than democratic organizations among the OVRA. We, to be frank, have no need of their services anymore. As any legitimate democracy probably doesn't need spies on their civilians and makes the controversial ones vanish suddenly. We shall dissolve these organizations and have the old secret police return home. This move has garnered much controversy amongst the dwindling hardliners who say that we will leave thousands without a job. As much as it may hurt to admit, they do have a point, and we need to give them a pension of sorts as well so the secret police doesn't turn into drunkards and hooligans as the black shirts did. Probably a good idea. But we're already pretty far down that way, you know, put up the party. While well, Siano has plans to eventually dissolve the PNF to allow the party to take its place, we cannot immediately do such an action. We first need to allow anyone, no matter their ideology, to enter the party. This will hopefully help sideline anyone who wants to maintain the PNF's dominance at the same time. We must remove all laws given the PNF preferential status in Italy. We've already begun this process, but it becomes necessary to guarantee that the PNF becomes sidelined eventually, so that we aren't left with random positions that can only be given to those of a certain party due to negligence. <clears throat> cool. Very cool. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. Look at that manpower. I think I made like the tank divisions actually a little bigger off screen just because we could. And if we're going to be using tank divisions, they're going to better be 20 combat width with recon tank divisions on them, which is really cool. Let's see. Anything else? No, I don't think I edited anything else. So manpower not looking great. Couple comments to go through. So what I was asking, when am I, am I ever going to play uh, Stellaris again? Um, yeah, I will. I promise you that. Oh, the MVSN has been abolished. Nice. But, uh, yeah, I will play Solaris again someday. Um, at the time of this recording, I'm actually in the process of learning really how to play it. So, cool. One last goodbye. For the one last time, the Fascist Senate, the Chamber of Fascism and Corporations, and the Grand Council have been reunited in the final meeting before all three are resolved. For one last time, Senate took the floor, addressing all three in three separate meetings. All the rooms were packed, the seats were filled, and journals swarmed around the elegant Roman palaces where the fascist regime was officially about to end its own existence. Siona delivered a very similar speech. All three times, we finally remember the days of Mussolini, spent a few somber words to think or remember the tragedies of the last world war, and spoke fiercely about his own roles, Italy's duce. He openly admitted that much of what he did was controversial, and an abrupt change from the glorious recent past of Italy, tension was clearly hanging in the air, as he outlined the sheer sh change that the PNF, the government, and the very country had got undergone in, the, his, in his years as duce. But... That tension was dissolved and erupted all three times in a thundering applause as Siano thanked his audience and left the floor for the last time. All three times as applause died down, the moment of silence slowly filled the air. Only time will tell what the silence will be followed by. Hopefully not gunshots. And the race begins. With the Duce officially out of the picture, the electoral campaign has truly begun in full force. A veritable explosion of tiny parties were formed in the recent past, but it seems that all the political forces in the country have coalesced into three major political blocs, which will duke it out in the ballots. The first one in the form was the Christian Democrats, or DC, led by Amnit Amintor Fanfi, a loose coalition of moderate conservatives, Catholics, and liberals who stress the importance of accelerating reforms to free up Italy's economy and society. The critics have pointed out, however, that their economic plan would probably spell disaster on Italy's underclass. To the left, we have the Democratic Front, or FT, led by well-known socialist Petro Neni, who has managed to take the reins of the leftist movement, coalescing it into a single party, the FT mostly wishing to liberalize the country's society, which will create a strong welfare state to make sure that Italy's poorest are cared for. <clears throat> The very existence of the PSDI has outraged the more radical conservatives and ex-fascists who claim to be a den of communists in disguise. Finally, the party which took the longest to form, to the right stands of the National Blocs, or BN, a quite heterogeneous alliance of former moderate fascists as a PNF formally dissolved to coalesce under the PN, monarchists and radical conservatives, all gravitating toward around the charismatic former PNF Secretary Giorgio Almirante, who seemed poised to continue Siano's status quo of slow burn reforms. As the electoral race picks up more and more speed, we can only hope that whoever gets elected, and the formation of the next government will be a smooth and orderly process without the ugly face of violent radicalism appearing again. Well, I guess it's time to talk about that stuff. Uh, so, it's 1965, we're doing anything we do there? Not really, no. Oh, I can choose some air assault chips, we're not going to use them, but that's totally fine. Okay, so, there's a lot of support for me to choose all three. Well, maybe not a lot of support for one of them. But, <clears throat> when we're choosing the nation, not the nation, the party that we do end up with, people recommend me every, all three of those. Literally all three of the political blocks. So... Some people said, oh, you should go down this way because most people haven't played this. But then you look at the comment above that and it says, oh, you should go this other way because other people always play that other way and play this. And you look at the other comments and are like, oh, people have already done that path. 
and then she'd go down this path. So no matter which way I choose, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to please everyone. So, and even from the beginning, someone recommended I should go with the BN, the national block, you know, with Almiranta. So, and other people recommended I go Sock Dem, but other people said that, you know, everyone's already tried Sock Dem, you should go Christian Democracy, but other people said people always choose Christian Democracy. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know which one to choose. But... We'll get there when we get there. So, you know, four weeks steps down. Today's Majesty King Umberto II de Savoia, King of Italy, Emperor of Ethiopia, first Marshal of the Empires, and has received and accepted the letter from His Excellency Glezio Siano, Count of Cortelazzo, Cortelazzo and Bucari, first Marshal of the Empire, in which the latter formally resigned his position of Prime Minister of the country. The King has graciously accepted to preside over the transition period, acting as a supreme executive power in Italy until the elections have taken place. This moment marks a historic landmark for Italy and will forever be remembered as a day when the birthplace of fascism decided to abandon that system and return to democracy. In the shade of the great monument of the fascist era, such as the EUR district in Rome, large crowds celebrate the beginning of a new era, which will mean freedom, prosperity, and happiness for all. Optimism is, a, is, is universal at this point, as all major political factions think they have a good shot at winning the elections. The predictions made by the media are completely inconsistent, with some polls projecting a victory for the liberals, others being on the leftists, and a few are even adamant that it will be the neo-fascists who will secure the mandate. No one knows who will win the battle for democracy, but one thing is certain, Siano the Duce that ended fascism has won his own battle. Praise Siano! PNFM, probably moderate, will become the ruling party for now. Please cut that down, thank you very much, and time for a new focus read? Oh, soon. We gotta do this one first, though. So. Yeah, we already read this stuff, so. Very good. Very, very good. Democracy returns to Italy. Democracy shines the Mediterranean once more. Pretty good. And we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and uh, warm during these hot days of July. <laughs> uh, military austerity, we don't need that for now. What? No, no, we don't need that. What are you talking about? Nice. So I think we'll, we will be able to cut down the national debt to 0% probably by the end of the campaign. Actually, maybe by the end of this episode. You never know. Alright, the race begins. With a new event, probably. The start of the campaign. Well, but it's already 1965. The time people were used to turning on the TVs in the evening and finally relaxing after a long day of work watching the amenities at the RAI that state TV usually offer. Exotic documentaries on the remote corners of the Empire, thrilling love dramas, and gossip about celebrities and socialites. But this evening they saw something they'd never seen on TV before, a political debate. In a moderately arranged TV studio in Rome, three men sat in uncomfortable looking plastic chairs, exchanging fulminating looks as the journalists interrogated them on various topics. Answering to a question on his economic program, Aldo Moro, with a slow but determined voice said, We do not say that the state should control all economic activities, but the state, in the complexity of its powers, should not preclude individual initiatives, but it should coordinate, discipline, and orient them. Question on the more openly socialist points of his agenda, Pietro Nenni, with a fiery, uncompromising tone, answered, I shall be blunt, socialism is nothing more than to bring forward those who were born in the back ranks. Finally, Giorgio Almiranta, asked about his opinions on fascism and democracy, answered with a slight smile, I was born and raised under fascism, and I believe in it so much that I can excused or ignored all of its mistakes. That is my past, our past, we cannot deny it. We should strive to let its valid aspects stay alive. As families and households around Italy have their eyes fixed on the TV screens, everyone, even the children who could barely understand that these three old men in suits were talking about, instinct instinctively knew that this was merely the start of something far bigger. Uh, oh boy, all monsters, oh god. So, as I was trying to say earlier, everyone, or not everyone, but a lot of you guys have different opinions on everything. So for this campaign, like I said, I, like Italy's going to get an update eventually, in which I will choose the other one or two paths that we haven't done before for the Democratic side. So I will probably get to all three sides eventually to Italy. Obviously, we're going to do one right now. So actually, I tallied up the votes for each, for what the comments supported in terms of party from the last video. So actually, for right now, there's an equal split between the Christian democracy path, at the time of this recording, of course, as well as the social democratic path. So I had to look at the amount of likes each comment got, and overall, for this campaign, it's decided that we shall go with the Christian democracy route just because it got the most likes for all the comments that supported it. Now, next time, we'll either go with author authoritarian democratic route or the sock dem route, which well, I'm sure will be in the Demo democratic routes for the Italy that'll be when they actually get a 
you know, refresh and rework. So, I think it's Moro that, uh, yeah, that's the one we want. Because Almiranta's ex-fascist kind of dude. Nenny is a uh, libertarian socialist that someone really wanted us, or a reform socialist uh, that someone recommended in, the, like, the third episode. So, my apologies if you, if we didn't go down the route that you want. It just, it is what it is. I can't please everybody, so... You know, I try to please as many people as I can, but it's just, it's not possible. So, I do promise that we're going to play Italy probably five more times on this channel. <laughs> a few more times for the Democracy Path once a new update comes down. A few more times for the Fascist Path, whatever that's going to look like when the update comes out. But, women in politics. In a quickly changing world, social roles and convention are often revealed to be much less external or eternal or unchangeable than they seem. With a recent wave of liberalization, many of the most active members of the new Italian parties and political associations belong to the gentle sex. And their political affiliation may be surprising. Carla De Paoli, director of one of the most widespread BN newspapers, the Italian, is a has published a heartfelt appeal to Italian women to reject the siren calls of the rising feminist movement and then rediscover the profundity of their traditional roles, queens of the household and keepers of the hearth. Still, by far, the louder voices come from the left. Lena Merlin, a prominent member of the PSI and a candidate for the parliament in the FD, has become the face of the Italian feminist movement, campaigning in favor of egalitarian laws and matters of divorce and inheritance, the full abolition of state-ran brothels, and founding of the Union Defesia della Donna, lobbying, a lobbying organization reuniting numerous pro-feminist organizations across the country. They want to get rid of state-run brothels? Are they going to replace it with private-run brothels? The center's answer is not long-awaited. In a heartfelt speech before a DC rally, Tina Anselmi, a rising star of the Catholic movement, has stressed that the need for Catholic women to advance alongside the rest of the country, advocating for equal opportunities on the workplace, with fair wages, more social security, and better schooling directed to women in the rural parts of the country. As many Italian women and girls feel that for the first time they've been given a voice, the world now, the world of politics wonders what they'll use it, how they will use it. So the Italian is probably uh, the more nationals, the BN one, so traditional family must be preserved, we must struggle for women's liberation, equal opportunities, no, benefit not just women, but all of Italy, uh, the left, uh, the PSI, more egalitarian, struggle. So struggle sounds like, uh, it's more like a left-wing issue because of like class struggle and such. Uh, let's see, traditional, traditional family sounds more like BN, so equal opportunities, like the last one, so we'll go with that one. I'm trying to just do everything that seems like it would be like going down this Christian Democratic route or whatever it may be. Or I'm just completely wrong. I could be I could be completely wrong about things. Total project points, 1.5. Projects in progress. How do we get 1.5? When do we get a focus tree? Coffee's pretty good, though. Yum, yum. Students in politics. So... The young generations have always been politically active in Italy, and as fascism attempted to channel the energy of youth into the Gruppi Universitari, Universitari Fascisti and similar organizations, Italian universities have a tradition of being involved in the country's political life. Predictably, many young youngsters, Italian youngsters, were attracted by the promises of liberalization of culture and academia offered by the left, and with Marxist and socialist literature spreading like wildfire, organizations like the Italian Socialist Youth Federation, the Movimento Studenesco, and a plethora of others are swelling the ranks at an impressive pace, and the first rise Rivalries between different strands of socialist and communist ideologues are starting. To every action corresponds a reaction, and from the right, the reaction did come, reforming the old GUF and other fascist era organizations. The University of National Action Front, or FUAM, are rapidly gathering under its aegis all the right wing students of Italian universities. Slowly but surely, the influence of the far right on the youth is showing it in unexpected ways. In Milan, a sort of somewhat openly neo fascist youth gang was formed in Piazza San Bal Balaba, near the city center. Watched with suspicion by even the BN, this San Balbalini are already starting to be associated with petty crimes and disturbing disturbances in the area. Somewhat unexpected due to the radicalism and idealism and typical of the youth. The centers managed to attract a fair share of young men and women too. Azione Cattolica and other Catholic movements, uh, e which even the fascist regime couldn't touch, are now becoming more important than ever, using Catholic strongholds like the University of the Sacred Heart in Milano as a HQ. It's hard to tell how much of the recent growth is due to genuine conviction or opportunism on the students' part. Struggle for socialism? United for Italy, Catholic movement. I'm not even going to bother like going too slow for that. So, hmm. It's a nice flag you got there, Germany. Is that? Ah, oh, it's Goring. Evacuating loyalists, huh? And we'll probably get another event soon. Oh, NPA. I've been recommended to play as or play yeah play as NPA. I've heard they're very very hard though. So, pride in Goring. Nationalize the bancarinos, and let's invest in some more oil stuffs. I love oil. Let's see. 
<clears throat> Unknown reserves in Greece, East Africa, Croatia. <clears throat> well, can we keep doing Libya? Just because it says... I don't know, it might be a bug. The region's been fully developed. It doesn't look like it, so that's actually pretty good. Improve Italy? Uh, doing any of this stuff will mean like nothing except it costs us political power and money, so... Uh, let's go with... Finish off work in the Persian Gulf. Sounds good. Minorities in politics. It has always been a diverse place in matters of culture and language, and in the annexation of vast amounts of land in World War II did nothing to ameliorate the issue. Now, in every corner of the country, minority populations are celebrating the return of democracy at the end of a fascist oppression that consistently denied them the right to speak their language and practice their culture. And mass numerous upstart politicians from South Sud Tyrol to Libya are joining the ranks of FD. New organizations like Val de Aosta's Union Badotaina, the Basavarin Caveri, and Malta Partite Laborstia. Laburist, Laburist, yeah, I don't know, Laburista? Led by Dom and Mintoff are allying with the leftist coalition, hoping to secure equal rights and government aid for the communities and regions often neglected by the fascist regime. A prominent strand of movements, however, often wary of leftism espoused by the AFD, begun gravitating towards DC instead. The most prominent of these are the Sutaroler Volkspartei, led by Silvius Magnago, and Seznam Svolnalnav, led by Engelbart Besedjnak, representing the German Slavic communities in Sutarol and the Italian Eastern Marches, respectively. Focusing on economic and administrative autonomy, they often represent the conservative and liberal-minded upper and middle classes of their respective regions. Of course, the Italian right wing immediately saw the various minority movements and saw as a major threat. Uh, the Blocci Nazionale, they are already launching propaganda campaigns aimed at Italian communities in the region like Trieste, Dalmatia, and Libya, decrying the encroachment of minorities against the rights of Italians. Throwing fuel on the fire to somewhat tense ethnic relations, the BN have begun to sway several Italian communities on their side, and they might have strong electoral results in the frontier regions. Equality... Such autonomy. These rivals should learn their place. Seems like the communities of Italian minorities deserve autonomy. I'm trying to be... I guess we're trying... Christian democracy is like the most centrist path here, I guess. Because we have a lot of the right, so I guess Christian democracy... They're not like they're going to bring back a theocracy. Which would be really cool in TNO. We unify with the Pope and become papal daddies. Well, I guess... Pop, technically, the papal states probably shouldn't become daddies, but whatever. Not like it hasn't happened before. Alright, when's the next tech done? Oh, it's gonna be a while. Let's see, can we do. No, I don't have a leader. Oh, sorry for a project, that's not too bad. <clears throat> ah, it's a Ah, Black Sabre only. Military and the politics. And the military mil militarized will. Forces have always had a complicated relationship with politics. Its ties to the government shifting and changing with the times. As Italy go is on the path to the elections, many prominent military figures, especially those in the upper brass, have expressed favor for the BN, a party portrayed by propaganda as a great defender of Italian greatness against the rising tide of leftism and foreign interference. The Blocci Nazionale are spending a great deal of its campaign efforts towards swaying the military electorate and key people to its side. And so far, it seems like their efforts are paying off. However, that's not to say that all the military is in favor of Almaranta and his group. A few among the older, more prestigious members of the Italian armed forces, including legendary general and marshal of the Italy, Giovanni Messi, are openly proclaiming their support of the Democrazia Cristiana. Wisened by age and experience, these veteran generals and officers are wary of the BN's hawkish rhetoric, especially after all the bloodshed of World War II and the following conflicts that cost so many Italian lives. Proclaiming the need for Italian army to be used as a force of peace, not war and aggression, their calls are being heard by more and more with each passing day. <clears throat> a somewhat similar trend has been developing among the common soldiering young air officers. Also tired of the seemingly wanton way past governments have been put their lives of Italian soldiers on the line, many among the lower ranks of the troops have begun to be attracted by the pacifist, pacifist agenda by the FD, calling for a gradual disengagement from the many Italian countries and a reduction of military budget. This tendency is still relatively minor, but it might begin to have greater importance in the future. We should heed Messi's advice. The soldiers want peace? I'm mean, I get they don't want to die, but they signed up for a reason, right? Whether they wanted to or not. Let's take a look. Schooling? Going up very fast. 12.75. That's probably the fastest I've ever gotten anything, maybe. 1, 5. That's not too bad. I like that. 3.75. 5 is not bad. But I do say we gotta get nukes. Okay, so for some reason, look at our da GDP. Not that, but GDP. It's going down more. At the end of the last episode, it was somewhere near like 73 billion. It's going down, and I don't understand why. 
Like, we'll keep an eye on it. 72.34. So 7234 is a pretty easy number to remember. The voices of the workers. The fascist dictatorship harshly repressed independent trade unions, replacing them with state-controlled organizations in which the work had very little say. Now, as the country democratizes, new unions have risen, usually with a close alliance to one of the electoral coalitions. Unsurprisingly, the FD has rapidly managed to make the hard, large headways into the working class electorate, and two major unions have now formed. The Italian General Confederation of Labor, or the CGIL, and the Italian Labor Union, or UIL, both supporters of the FD. Already gathering a large amount of supporters, both seem poised to be the FD's first line, be FD's first line in the struggle for workers' rights. However, that's not to say that the working class has rallied under the socialist banner. The other major trade union in the country, the Italian Confederation of Workers' Unions, or CISL, is openly pro-DC, and has managed to gather strong support among the more Catholic-minded strata of the working classes. Its bureaucracy and inner workings, closely tied to the DC, CISL enjoys the church's support and has begun to campaign for resolving the troubles of the working class through dialogue and mutual understanding, letting labor and capital work together for a brighter future. Finally, there are a few minor trade unions such as, much smaller in size, control the BN, most notably the CISNAL, or Italian Confederation of National Workers' Unions. Decidedly of the control by the BN, the, the organization doesn't seem to have gathered much following among the Italian workers. Indeed, much of the BN's platform regarding this issue has had decidedly anti-union tones, painting the, both all the other unions as dangerous dens of Bolsheviks and as slackers who do not want to work. Catholic doctrine? We can't trust unions? So, 7234... Uh, even though we're cutting the debt down a bunch. If we don't... Actually, if I cut down their liquid reserves, would that cut that down too? Because we should be going up. It's not like it's negative here, so... Keep spending that money. we got to keep boosting this up and even building up all the other areas too and then build up some infrastructure as well. Which some might say, it might be better to build up infrastructure first. But for TNO, building civilian factories first, at least in my opinion, is better just because you get the immediate benefit of the civilian factories first. The church's, the church's involvement, though. In a country where the overwhelming majority of the population is Catholic, it should, should come to be no surprise that the church holds a great deal of political influence. This is even more true in Italy's case, as the Holy See itself finds its home in Vatican City, a microstate surrounded by the Italian capital. Predictably, the church has enjoyed a great relationship with the DC, the only openly Catholic major party, and one which draws its roots into the many Catholic organizations that the fascist regime could never quite suppress. Much like the church itself, the D.C. is too, too oscillates its between progressivism and conservatism as the parties adopted the social teachings of the church and turned them into a political platform. Despite the church's overwhelming support of D.C., there are a few dissident members of the clergy that have different ideas, mostly coming from the lower ranks of the ecclesial hierarchy, priests in major cities of Italy. Often those from the most socially and economically downtrodden areas are more or less openly declaring their support for the F.D., hoping that they will solve or resolve many issues of the poor stride of the urban Italian society. <coughs> Excuse me. As the small numbers of Catholic intellectuals are also attracted by the FD, it seems like Italian Catholicism might be more red than one could expect. However, the forces of reaction and conservatism are still strong in the church. In many rural parts of Italy, their local parishes and churches are not merely places of con contemplation and worship, but also focal point of virtual and anti communistic or anti communist propaganda. Conservatives in the church in both the upper and lower ranks are often wary of the DC's reformism and openness to dialogue with the FD and more nationally conservative minded areas of bloating nationality are exploiting this wave of reactionary resurgence. Jesus was the first socialist. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe he was, but the church shall support the party of Catholics. In the name of God, those Bolsheviks must be stopped. Let's just go with them. So, yeah, oh, no, at 7234. Seven, so it went up a little bit because of the growth. Let's hope, let's hope it remains going up. Continues going up. I really want a new focus tree. Why don't we get a new focus tree? It's already October, man. Let's take a look. I didn't look at this at all. So we have us, we have Croatia and Bulgaria. Um, we have no one else, though. Greece left us. You broke my heart, Greece. Oh, let's take a look at this. Oh, I see purple. Oh, boy, we saw purple. <clears throat> Minor parties. Well, the three major competitors are locked in a deadly race as the elections approach. Other minor parties are also being formed and running their own campaign, hoping to snag a few percentage points of the Italian electorate. However, given Italy's multi party system, even a tidy party might be able to tip the scales of the political system. One such party is the Italian Liberal Party, the PLI, led by Giovanni Malagoldi, a decidedly pro business party, enjoying close ties to the Con. Industry and other organizations that represent the Italian industry on economic aristocracy. The PLI has a largely conservative and center-right platform, and out of a shared distaste for the FD's communism and mistrust for the DC's progressive policies, might even be drawn to support the BM. Another minor Italian party of some importance is the Italian Republican Party, or PRI, led by Hugo Lamalfa, a party with an ancient and notable tradition, including several important names of Italian anti-fascists. The PRI calls back to the Mazzis. 
Mazzini's vision for an Italian state, campaigning with a decidedly performance and progressive platform, balancing liberalism, rejection of communism and civic nationalism, with the PRI has been drawn towards DC, creating a working relationship with the Catholic Party out of overall similar agendas. Finally, a small but certainly very loud party is a radical party led by Marco Panella. A strongly liberal and pro-civil rights party allowed the campaign for women's emancipation, anti-racism, homosexual rights, pro-choice pro legislation, and other hot themes of political debates. The radicals have been drawn towards the FD because it's the only major political force willing to entertain them on such themes, even if, ironically, the radicals are a staunchly pro-free market and an economically liberal party. Oh, it's probably this middle one we want. Yeah. Oh, progressive balancing stuff. Mazzini. Mazzini. Oh, boy. Yeah. October. October, my friends, October. Ah. Oh, yeah, we, last time we saw that, uh, these guys, Comey is doing pretty darn well, I'd say. So, it looks like we, it's now time for us to do the eve of the election. As the date scheduled for the election approaches closer and closer, bookmakers and analysis, both Italian and international, are drawing their conclusive predictions regarding the new face of Italian politics. The most probable winner, according to the early analysis, is a centrist, D.C., a party born out of long-standing Catholic organizations with a fascist regime which could never truly dislodge due to their deep ties to the church. D.C. is a decidedly centrist party, finding a wide support base among the middle classes, many Italian Catholics, and political moderates. Closely behind in electoral projections is a coalition known as Fronte Democratico. Democratico. Democratico, a leftist big tent gathering numerous organizations to the left of D.C., chiefly formed out of the, the Italian Socialist Party and the Italian Social Democratic Party. NFT is a direct continuation of the anti fascist exile and underground organizations, which, although greatly weakened by the regime, never stopped being active. The FD receives a lot of support from the lower classes of society, mainly workers and farmers, as well as students and the Italian youth. Finally, the underdog of the race is the Brocci Nazionali, a right-wing coalition largely formed out of the remnants of the PNF. The BN oscillates between the conservatism, nationalism, and outright fascist rhetoric. A strongly divided movement kept together by the charisma of its leader, Giorgio Almaranta, the BN enjoys support from traditionalist-minded regions of rural Italy, former fascist bureaucrats and politicians, as well as a small but very vocal minority of young fascist students. And let's prospect in East Africa. Now, I do want to do this first. So, Siano's over here. Uh, daily change is going down. We have democracy, so conservative democracy, liberal democracy. We've got social democracy, which is going up. We have, oh, the king. But we also have Faustino Garibaldi with the Bagandian system. <laughs> well, if you don't intend to vote for the BN, we have ways to change your mind. Oh, that's funny. But the big sadness. I have no more coffee. Victory for the DC. The most widely predicted outcome for the elections has come to realization. Democracia. Christian has gathered enough votes to ensure a long, strong parliamentary majority. With Fronte Democratico a close second. A celebration is already underway in the many circles and associations affiliated with the party. A smiling King Umberto II has entrusted the candidates for DC former law professor Aldo Moro with the position of Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Italy, asking him to form a cabinet as soon as possible. In spite of the DC victory, some internal issues are still to be resolved. The broad voting base of DC inevitably means that numerous different currents have formed inside the party, ranging from moderates and conservatives, tied to the world of business, finance, and the church itself, to a much more progressive wing represented by the chiefly by Moro himself and his right-hand man, Ally. Um, Amentore Fanfini. Fanfani. Several issues divide the party, mainly regarding the possibility of a, some sort of accommodation or alliance with the FD. Despite the still somewhat uncertain details of the future Mori, Moro government, Italian societies react with optimism to the recent DC victory. Confindustria, the Italian Confederation of, Industri of Business, has expressed their hope that DC will be able to lead to increased prosperity for Italy and its many industries, while everyone in the country may. Many wonder if DC will be able to keep its promises of improved economic conditions and wages. With all these questions still open, Italy has now entered a new phase of history, one that was hopefully going to be characterized by peace and democracy. Viva la DC! Here's the democracy and peace. I don't know if I've ever seen that picture before. Probably have. I don't know, I play Tino so much that I've seen probably too many things. Oh, good lord. That's just like when Scorza became like leader of the country and they, you saw pretty much everything that they could do. So now here's my goal. Um, because of the way when we played Scorza before, at least when I played Scorza, maybe you saw that, maybe you didn't. 
Uh, we saw all the stuff up first, so eventually this might like lose, or we might not be able to do everything here. So I really want to just focus and barrel down one path as fast and as hard as possible, just so we can get something done and accomplish. So, uh, military stuff seems okay, but uh, I don't think we're going to do the military stuff. Oh, wow, leader experience gain. Wow, that's not too bad. Racial integration? Women? Oh, wait, so we have to choose between... Racial issues or women? Oh, man. Well, I guess we can't have both. Uh, <clears throat> Gaddafi becomes a general. Wow. Yeah, yeah I forgot. He's, he was quite old when he died. Maybe that's not the right... Gaddafi, I don't know. Naval supremacy. Now let's do the Domus Muddy Congress. Or oh, what's down here before we suck anything? Democracy in the Dark. Uh, mission of Budapest. Ooh. Ooh. Do we want to get Romania, Hungary, and France on our side? Or do we want to do other stuff? We have cracking the markets. Oh, I want to crack the markets. Oh, the Congress. Walk the tightrope. Tip the scales. Oh, man. Encourage pluralism. The... Oh, God. Lord, there's so much here. Fanfafi. Fanfani. Cinema industry. Party Catholics. The biggest tent. I don't know which way to go. Hmm. <clears throat> so, always false. You know what? With all, everything you see here, I'll leave this all up to you guys. Just because I want to focus on the markets more. So, we'll eventually do the Domus Mari Congress. But I would much rather focus right now on the markets. for my, Just for myself personally. So, let me know which way we should go. With all the different paths that we have between walking the tightrope, tip the scales. If we can do that, maybe we can't. Um... You know, this word, the progressive firebrand, unleashing a fanfa fanfani, sit with Nenny, which I don't think we can do, just because we went the, with the, went the way we already did. The biggest tent, maybe we can't go that way, I don't know, just, so, Republicans and Social Democrats. So, what we're going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and come down here and do uh, cracking the markets. With our economic crisis not yet solved after the Atlanthropa disaster, we need to expand our economy and find new markets for our products. Since technology is advancing and those who don't invest in innovation are left behind, we should start preparing plans to support our industrial and technological sectors. Ensure they can expand both their activities in Italy proper and the share of the world market. The flow of wealth and the creation of new workplaces will be a boon not only to, for society at large, but also for our state coffers. Alright, well, we'll see what happens. I think we're doing pretty darn well with the amount of civilian factors we have here. 18%, not bad. Really not bad. Additionally, oh, Muscovy. Muscovy still exists. I keep hearing sounds. Hmm. Death of Ho Chi Minh. Alright, not bad. Well, maybe we'll read the next one as well. Actually, when's the next research done? Oh, open parties, huh? Oh, look at that. Oh, look at this Burgundian system. No more Burgundian system. What? Oh, we're liberal democracy. Okay, well, whatever. Aldo Moro. Actually, authoritarian democracy is still there. Oh, Seattle's still there, too. Seattle's, oh, he's doing both. Okay, so, Aldo Moro. Ah, if you'd like to read about him, go right ahead. Nice. I wonder what he's looking at. Uh, research will be done in 11 days. Eh, we'll go and do, do this. Use, use IRI. Prison renovations, less political power, flat taxes. Income rate goes up. Ooh, Catholic trade unions cut the red tape. Modernize agriculture. Ooh, I kind of like that one. Ooh, what do we have over? More welfare? A moral welfare. Okay, Na highways for the nation. Not bad. Oh. Ooh, poverty rate will go up. Or we'll be better doing poverty stuff. One empire management point. Well, let's go promote small businesses. We get more money. I modernize agriculture. So, small business is the backbone of any economy. Naturally, we shall be doing our part to ensure that the great small businesses of Italy shall receive the support they need and deserve. We're spending responsibly to encourage the growth of small businesses, and we're enacting government programs designed to make sure that small business remains vibrant and strong within Italy. By doing so, Italy's economy shall grow ever more. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Not bad. And after this one, we shall choose this stuff. Military construction, not bad. In addition, we shall do modernize 
agriculture. Italy is definitely industrialized, but much of its economy is still Algerian nonetheless. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. After all, farmers are the backbone of any country as they literally feed the nation. However, much of Italy's farming methods and ag agricultural equipment is outdated. That needs to change and fast. If you'd like to read about the improved academic base, please go right ahead. It happens every single campaign, so it is what it is. Therefore, we should be providing farmers with state-of-the-art equipment and teaching them the latest farming techniques. In order to ensure Italy's large agricultural remains competitive, which will be very, very good. So we got more research speed. Great. I love it. I think that's great. 13 days left. Oh, what do we have here? Find the project. Oh, good lord. The government of Italy. Unity updates weekly. 43% of the seats in Parliament. Oh, the dominant faction in the DC is liberal wing. Uh, the strength of the FDs is high in the moderate wing. Uh, the BN is stable <laughs> and the conservative wing. Okay. Oh boy. That seems a bit crazy. Um, I know this is getting reworked as I said before in previous episodes, but oh boy. The best of enemies? Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's come over here as well and just do this stuff too. More max factories would be great. Man, I just want to focus on the economy. Oh, wow. Two billion? Okay. See, it went back down. Look at that. GDP. It was 72.41. Now it's 71.55. It literally went down again. I don't understand why it's keep going down. It didn't make no sense to me. I don't like this. Why does it hurt me? Cutting the red tape. Oh, uh, stability. More cap. Catholic trade unions. You get better monthly. Oh, look at that. Monthly poverty change, as well as industrial expertise change? Not bad. You lose output, but you get more stability as well. Catholic trade unions. Trade unions are great and all, but you know what is even better? Catholic trade unions. We are empowering Catholic trade unions, such as the Confederazione Italia Sindicati Lavoratori, a CISL, a Catholic trade union linked to Christian democracy, in other words, our kind of people. Some of the more radical trade unions may complain that we favor them, but what do they know? CISL and its associates will shall be more than up to the task. Ah, uh, yeah. Very nice. A just salary. Oh, minimum wage. I don't like that. I don't want to lose max factories because we need more factories in every state. Construction. Not bad. We won. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 plus. Working on building, building, building. Yeah, 71.63. Why is it going down? I don't understand that. So we've got a better academic base. We have tertiary schooling now. Academic golden age would be great to get to. But we still get how much every month? Three. That's not bad. 3.75. We went from 12.75. Happy 1966 to you, everyone. But now we're here? That's not too bad. Ooh, what do we have? A light in the darkness. Ooh. How do we spend these empire management points? Like, I don't know how to spend this. But you can't click on this, which really sucks. So... Now that the authoritarianism is buried in Italy's soil, we must show ourselves to the world that, as we have become. In Europe, Italy is a light in the darkness, a democracy among so many d despots, and evidence that freedom is possible even in the shadow of the German Reich. If people of talent and energy from the world over should wish to come to this country and help build it anew, we will welcome them with open arms and a spirit of discovery. For it is not enough to bury fascism. Now we must build every day what it means to be independent and free, and reap the benefit from opening up to all those of goodwill. Whether this light will survive in so much darkness is another matter. But... To have tried to build something beautiful is in the Italian spirit, and the whole world will see us do it. A renaissance dawns. Very good. And I love Catholic trade unions. Yes, absolutely. Uh, mortal welfare. Good, good, good. Uh, cutting the red tape. I don't want to hurt stability. So I'll go with using the IRI. The Instituto per la Reconstruzione. Industrial is our strongest economic asset, a giant conglomerate of industries and investments funds under total state control, ready and willing to do our bidding. Our ministries for economic and financial affairs, for the foreign affairs and for international trade are working hard. Concoctions, a large-scale plan for the future, encompassing all sectors of the economy, from industry to innovation to trade and even financial speculation. While it may take some time for the draft to be finished, a strong injection of liquid money into the RRI's accounts will have a strong, but a small but immediate impact on the economy, showing the people that we are slowly growing once more. Cool. So actually, with this stuff, I'm really... Maybe I shouldn't... Eh. With this stuff, I mean, obviously we've got to probably go down with the, the DC route, which I'm not really sure which one it is. Stability? Uh, we're a liberal democracy, so... Right? Yeah, we're liberal democracies here. So maybe this one would be bad. Christian ideals in a secular state. The party of Catholics. That's probably the way we want to go. Exert control. Ah, oh, that's, that's kind of nice, yeah. Sway the ACLI? Huh. Okay. 
Hey, that's not too bad. Contain the prim Primavera. Okay, they're not great, not bad. Dominate the Democratic Arc. Le 500 Lira de Moro. The new banknotes. Okay, keep it vague. Short term solutions. I see piano there. Electrify the state. Oh, is this like probably healthcare? Abolish Metayaga? The Good Friday Agreement. Oh, if you like to read about that, go right ahead. All right, cool. Use the IRI. Spend more, cut down, not bad, 71.7, 7. hmm. All right, very cool. And we shall do highways for the nation, the battleground. While this is not necessarily our expectation or desire, it appears that Italy has become the battleground for a fight up for influence between the US and Japan. We would like to build ties with both for the good of economic development and matters of diplomacy, but to remain autonomous in the face of such pressure will not be simple. For US and Japan, despite their assurances of benevolence and friendship are clear in their intent, both see themselves as the first-rate power attempting to gain influence over second-rate one, and as attempting as it may be to be and to be flattered by such intense interests, we cannot allow our freedom of action to be threatened. Italy is a sovereign nation, she, she, she shall be treated as such. Foolish indeed to threaten her pride. I want to get down here, so we need airports and ports. Ports for the Mediterranean. When the Elanthropa Dam drained the Mediterranean, advancing the coastline by several miles, our entire naval industry died. Genoa, Naples, Venice, Trieste, and Livorno all became joint ship graveyards amidst a salty desert. Almost 20 years later, the sector is not yet recovered, as building a shop shipyard is a tremendous investment. We need to kickstart the naval production facilities, and the RI will provide the means. Oh, look at this. Cool. The board has approved the foundation or the founding of Fincantieri. Interior, a new subsidiary tasked with building and maintaining new dockyards in suitable locations along the coastline. It'll take time, but in the end, naval orders will increase, and new companies will rise to meet the demand. New harbor towns shall rise in the salt wastelands, and perhaps one day we'll be able to match the arsenal of old. Oh, crap. Sucknicks. I guess so. Choosing your future. Oh, good. Oh, no. What is all this stuff? As Rome opened his gates to its world superpowers, they in turn have opened the doors to us. Foreign investors eager to access a market brain with potential as ours will scarcely waste time injecting capital into Italy's economy. Capital which we may then use to fund projects otherwise overlooked for the immediate cost. Nevertheless, our re-entry to the world affairs must be slow, measured, and deliberate. Recklessness will invite only to a destabilized regime. We shall thus select five issues on which Italy's prospective allies may assist her, that Washington and Tokyo may know where their money is best put to use. To reconnect Italy to the world. Anything else? 43% still. Not too much is going on, which is fine. Mm. Independence. Trade complex. Engine of war. Military affairs. Opening the empire. Kind of like this one. Pollux of petrol. Reversing autarky. Oh, what industrial measures trade? Let's go with trade compacts. All right, maybe trade will be good. What can we do here? Testing in progress. Um, maximum investment. If Italy keeps its independence, Italy will gain resources to market. Um, what if we don't keep our investment? What does that cost us? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Ports for the Mediterranean, though. Nice. Oh, God. Oh, we need political power for this crap. Oh, no, 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 no. Further influence explanation. Encourage domestic industry. Decrease both American and Japanese influence. Moderately increases our independence. Um, honestly, I kind of don't mind me going with the OFN. Japanese eagerness. Uh... Okay. Well, okay then. Anyways. We don't have the political power anyway. So, airports for the world. Air transport is the fastest way to transport goods and people around the world. While the former are easy and cheaper to send by train, the latter will surely enjoy a national air company that has safely carried them to their intended destination. The IRI is devoted to a savage Alitalia, <clears throat> a new subsidiary with trans air transport as its main objective. The company shall focus on air connections between the various parts of our nation, and with all members of our sphere of influence, we will also feature dedicated connections with New York, Tokyo, and even Berlin. Very good. Two weeks left, which is totally fine with me. Uh, Budget-wise, cut it down. 71.77 is not bad. Almost Less than two billion is pretty good. How many other nations can say they have no national, almost no national debt? Oh. Oh, less than a billion. Oh, good lord. Uh, yeah, I don't know which way to go. Tempered, yeah, cool down. 
Japanese trade barriers encourage American investment. I really don't mind going with these guys just because oh, fan seems like it's probably good for us. Tipping the scales, the gears of diplomacy turn unceasingly, no matter the day or hour. Ambassadors from around the world mingle with Italian high society for every occasion its socialites, its socialites permit. As America and Japan continue courting the empire's favor, the notables have taken center stage in the recondite games, Italy's rich and powerful play. Left untouched, as always, is lay Italian, and yet they are easier influenced by our hands than the petty nobles of Rome, Milan, and Naples. With some effort, we can convince the masses to spurn the foreigners' wiles, or to so desire, prepare them thoroughly for one of Italy's many suitors. We can't choose our enemies, we can choose our friends. Hmm. I don't mind doing this, but if with max investment, I mean, if we keep its independence, we will gain more resources to market. Well, we lose resources to market. Trade opinion, energy GDP, GDP growth, monthly poverty rate. I don't know. I'll let you guys. Should we go with Japan, Italy, or Italian independence and USA stuff? I'll keep the political power for now, but I'm not really going to touch it too much. So I'll let you guys decide that one. It probably makes more sense for us to probably ally with America, though. So, and airports for the world. Houses for the People. Founded in distant 1903, the Autonomous Institute for People's Houses promoted council housing, allowing poor people to live in a respectable household at a fair price. With thousands of buildings under its administration throughout Italy, and even in some of our African colonies, the IACP provides great help to the destitute families of our nation. With our economy slowly improving, and more and more farmers and crowding, are crowding the city to work in the newly established factories, therefore the IRI shall subsidize the IACP so that it will be building house hundreds more houses, sustaining the construction industry and indirectly benefiting the working class, two birds with one stone. Okay, cool. Hello! The Emperor has returned, but for how long? Wait, what the heck? Sovereignty of Western Russia. What? I don't think I've ever seen Vyaka win, except when I play as Vyaka. Vladimir the Third. Kind of hoping um, Komi would win, but okay. See, now it went back down. 70.84. America wins the issue. Following weeks of intense negotiations between the American, Japanese, and Italian officials in Rome, we have received word that the Italian government is receptive to the American proposal at hand and will align themselves closer to the U.S. on the current issue. In Washington, State Department diplomats breathe a sigh of relief as Italy draws one step closer to the OFN and the free world, while their counterparts to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Tokyo curse under their breath at the setback. In Rome, government ministers nod solemnly for themselves, knowing that their decision will play a pivotal role in deciding the future of Italian Empire for generations to come. The battle for Italy continues as the OFN co-prosperity sphere will await the next summons from Rome to discuss the next item on their agenda. Closer to the eagle, and okay then. So wow, we went straight down there. Okay, well, we did strengthen Italy. Oh, oh yeah, trade combats, opening the empire, petrol, diplomatic cords. Let's go with bridges of spies. Spies might, be, might not be bad. Joint exercises. Uh, let's go with choice. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Makers of academia, industrial endeavors. I'm gonna go with reversing autarky, and I'll go through one more focus before we do anything else. Ooh. That's not bad, but obviously we won't be able to do that. High investment, maybe? Minimal investment? Let's go medium. I don't know. Let's see what happens. It doesn't really matter to me too much. Let's go through one more focus, and I'll end the episode slightly earlier than normal, just because I want to get your guys' opinions on stuff and thoughts. Nice. That's a crab. That's theirs. Even in Croatia. We shall build up their GDP as well. Very nice. And as you can see, we're building up a lot around here. So, the Vipuri Conference, a crisis averted. Followed up with what? Houses for the people? Of course. National debt will increase. So be it. And we have one day's left. Very good. And let's read one more focus before we get too far. With Path to Prosperity, The World Calls. Not bad. We'll do it now. Highways for the nation. Highways were first built during fascism as part of Mussolini's grandiose infrastructure projects. Unlike most of them, however, the highways are actually very useful at linking our long mountainous nation from Turin to Milan and Trieste, and from Milan to Rome and Naples. With the expansion of our empire, we should expand the highway system so it includes Corat Adriatic Littoral and Libyan Littoral, greatly helping the Italian communities in those once distant lands. Finally, we shall group all the highways in our single unified authority, creating Auto Trades per Italia, a publicly managed company tasked with managing, maintaining, improving, and expanding our highways so that they always have a function at the highest possible efficiency. Cool, everyone. Hope uh, you enjoyed today's slightly shorter episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you are new, check out my Discord link if you haven't already in the. Uh, description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as you shall let me know whether we should join the OFN, maybe, or stay, you know, go with the OFN, maybe really focus on the Japanese, or just stay with independent Italy. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.